Hey everybody, this is Joe Fami with a video about things to do during market corrections. Uh, part of the reason I'm doing this video is I wrote this article for Yahoo Finance titled Four Things to Do During Market Corrections. A link to this article can be found below the video. And when I wrote this article, I got a lot of questions, comments, emails, so I just wanted to do this video to help explain uh, the points a little bit clearer. Now, the most common question I got, or sort of the basic concept uh, that people asked is, how do we know when we're in a correction? So I'm going to pull up MarketSmith, and this is a weekly chart of the S&P 500. I personally look for a close below the 10-week moving average to tell me that the market is you know, potentially starting to go into a correction. For followers of my videos, uh, the 10-week moving average is the uh, red line here, and people who have been watching my videos know I've been bullish basically since mid-2016 because we have held this line, which is traditionally an area of institutional support. So that tells me when we get a decisive close below this line that we're in a correction. Um, and again, that's for my time frame, which tends to be shorter to medium term time frame. So when you look back at October 2018, uh, we had a decisive break. When we're around the line, it's sort of a yellow light to be on lookout and to start to get a little cautious. But when we have a decisive break below the 10 week moving average to me based on my time frame that tells me that we are in a correction now I'm gonna reset the lines and show you the black line here is the 40 week moving average which roughly coincides to the 200 day on the daily chart that's why you hear a lot of people discussing the importance of the 200 day moving average so the 40 week moving average is for a longer term time frame for longer term trend followers and it's basically got you back in the market since early to mid 2016 and even all the way up even in the correction we saw in early 2018 we held above that for the whole time so for longer term trend followers it's kept people in the market but then when we had this decisive close which came a couple weeks later in mid-october a decisive close below that line for sure tells you to be cautious and that the markets in a correction so just to review a, for shorter medium term time frames and it's up to you to know your time frame a close below the 10 week is a sign that we're in a correction and for longer term trend followers a close below the 40 week is a definite sign that the market is under distribution and that we're dealing with a correction so going back to the points of the article and I'm gonna scroll down to the first point here is the first thing to do is to protect capital now keep in mind the concept of raising cash is more for traders active managers and less for longer term investors someone sent me an email and said it's not a good thing you're doing to tell people to raise cash because they tend to get out you know uh, in the downside and then when we rebound they never get back in that's a very good point but my first response uh, to that um, uh, that email is number one this is never to be considered investment advice so you have to know your own time frame and make your own decisions the second uh, you know response to that is you know it's a good point that if you are a longer term investor for sure you want to stay fully invested or stay you know pretty well invested depending on your time frame for example if you're younger and you're adding money to your 401k continue to do that and that for sure is a good point so the point the concept of raising cash again uh, to repeat is more for traders and active managers um, but even if you are a longer term investor, there's nothing wrong with having some cash available for a rainy day. Even Warren Buffett, who we all know as a longer term time frame, has a lot of cash on hand for maybe something he wants to put to use when he finds better values or for a rainy day when corrections tend to overshoot to the downside. So there's nothing wrong with having some cash. And the other reason I put here is four out of five stocks move with the general direction of the market so I don't care how great the company's doing when the markets under distribution and the big institutions are dumping stock they pretty much there's there's nothing is safe and they tend to crush a lot of stock so that's the first thing you can do I've said this a hundred times the second point don't underestimate the importance of protecting your confidence the main reason is that when we do bottom and when this correction is over you want to be prepared for what will be some tremendous opportunities but if you've gotten crushed, if you've gotten beat up, you tend to hesitate. Let's say you normally buy 100 shares. You might say, oh, I'm only going to buy 25 shares because I've been killed in this market. Or even worse, you don't pull the trigger and you just don't buy any shares. So 
Uh, it's important to protect your confidence. Some ways to do that is by reading uh, both you know, investment books, uh, some self-help, psychology books to keep your mind sharp, and then be honest with, your, with yourself and do post-analysis of your trades. We all make mistakes. We all make errors, myself included. So what I like to do is be honest with myself and say, okay, what are some things I did well? What are some things that I can improve on? And make the proper adjustments, adjustments to improve on past mistakes. The third point here of minimizing trading is uh, from my over 20 years of trading experience, some of the most frustrating times to be involved in the markets during these corrections. So I have simply made one adjustment of either sitting out or keeping things light. The reason you want to keep things light, again, going back to the example of 100 shares, maybe you buy 25 shares because volatility increases during corrections. So you tend to get wider ranges and whipsaw type of moves. So you want to protect your capital and protect your confidence by keeping positions light so you don't get chopped to death and get stopped out and stopped out and stopped out. So one you know, good piece of advice for traders is to either sit out or uh, minimize your exposure and keep your money for healthier times. Some people say, I love volatility as a trader. This is great. That also assumes you're picking the right side of the market because when the Dow moves up 200 points and then down 300 points, that assumes you're on the right side when it's up and you're short when it's down. So uh, just to minimize frustration, I recommend keeping smaller than normal positions. The last point I want to make is to re reiterate is to keep a watch list because when this correction's over, again, there will be tremendous opportunities. The example I wrote in this article is after the financial crisis and housing collapse of 2008 and 2009, there were two stocks, Netflix and Green Mountain Coffee, that were holding up tremendously well. The concept here is that if a big correction doesn't hit those stocks, when the tension's relieved off the markets, you have a higher probability of those stocks doing well, and those stocks both went on to over a 1,000% or more gains. And again, this is more for growth managers or traders who are looking to trade strength. Even if you're a value person, you keep a watch list of something that you say, hey, I wanted to buy this stock, but I missed it, but now it's come in. I have a longer term time frame. Uh, I can maybe nibble on some shares uh, because it's a more, you know, it's a decent valuation here. And again, the watch list that you keep should depend on your time frame, your investment objectives, and the type of style you're trading uh, as a trader, where a growth person will have a different watch list than a value person. But I think it's important to stay on top of the market and keep a watch list because when we do bottom and no one knows if these corrections go on for three weeks three months or longer when we do bottom it's important to keep a watch list of stocks that are holding up well if that's your style to take advantage of what could be some great opportunities so again the link to this article it can be found at the bottom of the video I just wanted to do it to help sort of clarify some of the questions I got I hope you found it helpful and uh, thank you so much for tuning in